you realise that? How did you learn about life? Lessons that you learn that you don't learn at like a younger age. For me, as a teenager, I started uncontrollably. Really, it was beyond belief. And in fact, I'm going to be meeting a friend from school I haven't met in 25 years. No Next week. And it's going to be interesting to see how mm, my speech is with him. So, going back to your question. I'm 42, Tom. You're 22. So, I've got 20 years experience in terms of living through the pain of stuttering. Mm. I realize profoundly that I'm connected to the universe. Um, Albert Einstein said, a human being is part of the whole. We call the universe a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself as something separate from the rest, his thoughts and feelings. It's kind of an optical delusion of his consciousness. Now, if Einstein said it, it's got to be one of the truths of the world. He has discovered many things, many more things than I have. And what I'm trying to share with you, Tom, is that I, at an early age, could speak to my cat and speak to myself without stuttering. But when I was in class, I would stutter uncontrollably. With my friends, I would stutter a bit less. So I had to, later on, I, ha I realized that I had to analyze in what situations I started less and in what situations I started more. So going back to uh, my initial quote, which was, if you can speak in one situation without stuttering, you can speak in any situation. I believe that to be a fact in helping people to overcome stuttering. One doesn't have to be a recovering stutterer forever, like some of the programs say. Because if you think like that, you will be a recovering stutterer forever, working on your speech forever. At some point, you need to give yourself a break and believe you're part of the universe. So, you, 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 your statement that if you can speak fluently in one situation, you can speak fluently in any situation. When I'm saying speaking fluently, what I'm saying is, if you can speak in, s in one situation without stuttering, you can speak in any situation. Stuttering is such a loaded word. You just told me R Ramesh had very few words in which he stuttered, and stammering and stuttering was one of it. Uh, well, yeah, welcome to Finding Voices podcast. <laughs> we just jump into it as usual. Well, yeah, dude, you're right. If you can speak um, in one situation without stuttering, you can speak in any situation. You agree? Absolutely agree, but it works uh, in reverse as well. Please so, uh, well, if you can start uh, in one situation, you can start in all of them. Awesome. All right, but uh, here we're going again uh, back to um, con con confirmation bias, and it's whatever you see out of the choices you have, it's what you do in life. If you see bad, you do bad. If you see good, you change friends and you become better right what is it your yeah. help book <laughs> to, to help go through us <laughs> oh shit yeah i was right <laughs> let's turn this let's turn it all off we we don't live show okay so um yes you got that right but uh, in order to use that you have to have a approach do you have approach in your book? For me, it took me two years from when I started writing my first book, Rich Thinking, to realize that I'm part of the universe. 
just like Einstein said. We are all part of the universe. It's more of a spiritual journey, Tom and Alex, rather than a stuttering journey. Because the fear of stuttering is within our own minds. I'm 42, you're 38 or 39, and Tom, you're 22. So you have a long way to catch up. But if you can really profoundly believe that you're actually part of the universe, Tom, and you're not something separate, that you're not out on your own, then you can release most of the fears. And in my book, Dreaming of Stuttering Freedom, <laughs> here's a plug, it's on Amazon, for a tenner, 10 pounds, 10 dollars, 10 euros. It's a great book. Uh, Ruben is going to write me a great review, I'm sure. Um, ten gold coins. Ten gold coins, yeah. <laughs> if you want to pay me in gold coins, I'll be more yeah, than happy. Bitcoins. That'd be, that'd be worth a fortune if it was worth 10, ten bitcoins, wouldn't it? I think ten, so. Uh, kisses. <laughs> Depends who's doing the kissing. If it's Jennifer Lopez, Kylie Minogue, Julia Roberts, Nicole yeah. Kidman. Quick fact here. Did, did, did you know that Kylie Minogue stutters? Yes. yes, I've heard of that, but uh, I would love to hear it in person. I should be so lucky, 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 lucky. I should be so lucky in love. I am, I think. <laughs> All right, so... Shall we go back to our list? Uh, that was... N we don't have a list, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't question. You can start talking. Okay, I, I read the list, I know. Why we start? Do you know why we start? That's a great question, Alex. Why did I stutter? I can't say why we stutter because I can only talk about myself. Mm -hmm. I stuttered from the age of three, four. I stumbled over words and then at the age of eight I was sent to speech therapy. And from then I was stuck in speech therapy till I was 18 when I went regularly to speech therapy courses. I actually enjoyed going to speech therapy, Alex. In the UK, the speech therapist, Mary Horn, she came to my school and uh, we played, played Lego and we spoke, we read books, we spoke, and it's like something comfortable. Yeah. So I didn't have any pain in terms of, I actually enjoyed the time I spent with my speech therapist and with my mom because my mom also came to, this, to the session. Now, as a child, as a toddler, they s stumble over words. They hesitate, they repeat. That's perfectly natural. In fact, 80% of toddlers recover or they don't stutter, they don't develop the stuttering and they stop this behavior, this pattern of speaking automatically without receiving any speech therapy. Why do you think that's the case, Tom? Why does, why do 80% of children recover spontaneously without any, any therapy? No idea is my answer. But it's true, right? 80% it's true. I think it's, I think it's about 80% who do recover. As to why, you know, that, uh, that, that's one of the hottest questions in stuttering research. Well, yeah, it's a <coughs> Ziv's law again, and it's true. Uh, it just... Um, the way it is, it's 80% of all children would stumble and have a stuttering-like behavior from the age of uh, 3 to to 5. 80%. Of all children? 80% of all children will stumble over words. For how long? For, okay. for a year. Well, for whom... Uh, I mean, it's different for everybody. But, uh, so... Some will recover in a month, some will recover in, I don't know, weeks, maybe, maybe a year. So yeah, but then out of this 80% of children, 99% will grow out of it and it won't be a problem. So, dude, my question remain, like, why we start uh, again? I believe we start uh, because we develop the fear of stuttering and the fear of speaking because we are taught in speech therapy to control your speech where in fact 
like John Harrison in his book Stuttering, Redefining, Redefining Stuttering. He talks about the whole aspect of the whole self rather than just focusing on just the mechanism of voice production. So I believe the speech therapists have something to answer. Is it that because children go into speech therapy that they learn that there's something wrong with their with the way that they speak, with the way that they are pronouncing, producing sounds, syllables? Yes, they're all well meaning, but that's a interesting point. What do you think? Well, you mentioned we start uh, because of the fear. So if that is true, sounds like uh, mm, obsessive compulsive behavior where obsession of obsession is a fear of speaking and uh, compulsion is a stuttering block. Well, and that thing is uh, uh, treatable because it's a psychological problem. And uh, you mentioned uh, to be in control. Stuttering uh, might be over controlled speech, so the techniques might be useful to release control instead of emphasize it. And I don't think uh, many of um, speech language pathologists understand that about stuttering and stuttering I divide it in two parts so in your case it's a part before they took you to speech language pathology this is where you were a uh, free stutter you didn't care that you stutter you exactly. you had no idea uh, and you would just and you were you weren't blocking either you had no blocks you would repeat sounds you would prolong them so that uh, that state is is not stuttering yet it, it's just a disorder Bobulating, as John yes said. but it's not a communication disorder a, as a psychological problem yet that becomes later when you become s self-aware and self-conscious about that you talk differently and at, from that point you start blocking because you start to even uh, to try to control your speech instead of staying in this uh, bliss repeating sounds mumbling mode. I wholeheartedly disagree with what's being said here uh, the yeah. view that the the view that uh, the is that because you've been told that uh, that, uh, that that you stutter and you become self-conscious of stuttering was a very popular theory in the 1960s. Uh, there's a there's a very big speech therapist called um, Wendell Johnson, who famously performed the Monster Study, which is w w one of the most. So that so for those who don't know, the Monster Study is one of the most unethical studies ever, whereby they took uh, a group of orphans, some of whom stuttered, some of whom did did not stutter, and then they would try to teach those who didn't stutter to stutter, and those who did stutter not to stutter and by doing this th they were using Wendell J Johnson's theory of uh, stuttering as like a learnt behaviour whereby they were rewarding people who spoke um, who, stu who stuttered or however th they spoke for, for the children who stutter and he would p punish the fluent children for any slight stumble or, <laughs> or even just fl uh, fluent speech and the results of the experiment found that uh, the children who were fluent who were told that they stuttered they didn't end up as stutterers they might uh, they might have d d developed avoidant behaviours like for, for instance they might have uh, being a lot quieter and so on. There's a lot more online, um, and the children who did stutter, who were told that they didn't stutter, still stuttered, but they were perhaps more 
confident about speaking. But they were more at ease with speaking, but they still stuttered, still in blocks. Nothing really changed, and that, in effect, disproved uh, Wendell J Johnson's own theory that stuttering was a learnt and socially conditioned behaviour. <coughs> All right, I can give you three more reasons why we stutter. Reason number one is we hiding our stuttering. I agree. Do you agree? No. Then you should keep your experiment for for one year. Okay. Reason number two is that we give too much meaning into things. We're like, oh, this conversation matters. That makes sense, yeah, because... Well, but uh, it's irrational fears that makes us, like, add too much meaning into life, into actions. It's it's completely not there. Objectively such subjective. Well, anyway, reason number three. As a personality who picks up stuttering we are naturally avoiding things avoiding people uh, well stuttering is a part of a personality disorder no. and a community well, yeah it is well it can be it can be well it can be. it's a communication disorder per se and uh, only a certain t type of people have a com c communication disorder okay. well <laughs> okay I would say that stuttering has a stuttering block, silent block has a psychological origins in it. You can speculate and theorize all you like, but what the stu studies show is that there is no connection between personality and stuttering. You go around. I can say that stuttering affected my personality or was it my personality that affected my stuttering? Mm -hmm. Which is it? So, uh, this is most likely to be a stuttering oh, well, affected your personality type situation. We were just discussing off camera how Tom has been speaking like he does or like he has been for the last uh, couple of weeks and to see how he felt when speaking or stuttering with people and for me stuttering out of control is a subconscious process it just happens automatically and it's something that we discussed off camera what do you, what do you reckon? Can you repeat the question, sorry? Yeah, it's about stuttering being an automatic subconscious process, just like speaking. Speaking for most of the people is an automatic subconscious process. That's why some people they have Freudian slips; they just speak; yeah. it just comes out. Yeah. Most people don't consciously choose their words like like we do we have been on programs which teach us to formulate yep. so really think about what we're going to say yeah. so so we have moved speaking from a unconscious pr process to a conscious process where we are yep. where we have total control mm. now stuttering is subconscious because you are making no effort to control your breathing control your voice pr voice pr voice production right yep. so how does that affect your personality when you are meeting people for the first time? Does it make you shy? Does it make you nervous? Or do you just don't care now? So personally, over the past few weeks, I've found that while there might be mi 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 minimal anxiety b b b b before I go into a speaking situation, in general, I've lost the anxiety which I used to attach to speaking. And this is um, interesting in that I used to use a lot of Maguire techniques. I was also a, a clever stutterer. I could profess as being fluent most of the time. But going into situations, every situation, mind, where I'm stuttering, 
including just talking to, 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 to my g- g- girlfriend uh, 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 on my own, or talking to my pet. It means that every situation, there isn't any change in anxiety. I don't b- become a d- different thing because every situation I'm going to stutter in. So for me, it's lost at the moment, and it might change in the future, but it's lost the anxiety I once had. So you are happy stuttering out of control or subconsciously letting the speaking happen? If I say I'm content, not happy. But this is coming into philosophy now. What's the difference? So happiness is often a fleeting emotion and you can't consistently maintain it. Uh, Contentment is something where it's very much like a long-lasting emotion that you can get through okay. long stretches of time. I mean, th- th- this is really kind of what separates Eastern versus Western philosophy. Eastern philosophy is all about contentment and j- just being all right. Western philosophy is ch- chasing the elusiveness uh, uh, of things like happiness and and basically spikes. It's kind of more about spikes, mm. while Eastern philosophy is more about levelness. And so I'm very much at like a level plane right now with my stuttering. Good for you. Right, I want to return to a question. I think it's possible when your unconscious mind would stutter uncontrollably, while your conscious mind has no problems with what's going on outside you. So you will not have a fear going into a conversation, but uh, consciously. But your s- subconsciously, you will have fears, and that would make you stutter. So yeah, it's possible. It's probably what you're doing, Tom. Yeah. Ma- well, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. <coughs> okay, but uh, Rama, you said that uh, blocks uncontr- uncontrollable thing, right? So it means it comes from our unconscious mind, which runs ninety-five percent of all our day. Only five per only five percent of a day we're kind of aware, like being in in the present. So, and what unconscious mind is? <coughs> it's uh, it's first of all it's unintelligent. It responsible for instincts and for many many things, but mostly it's just a recording. It doesn't have any analysis to it. It uh, it just reacts to it how conscious mind reacted to this recording and that becomes recording itself again and it can put a recording to any life situation so if we consciously working on our speech what we can do what we're really working on is to modify our unconscious behavior to a certain social situation and we can only rewrite on top of those fears we write things which uh, are not fearful for example I would block always on a K sound give me some some examples Kuzmenko your son yeah. It's a loaded word, isn't it? Right. Or um couple. So I would say I would prolong K or I would bounce on it or I do or I go I certify on it. So it, I can uh, I don't know if if I would start on K or not. I might get lucky three times out of five even now even now 80 percent. now even probably more but if i let it go i wouldn't know on which i wouldn't block and that would make me uh, be more careful or like maybe i would want to block in one place i'll be okay and i'd rather not block in another place so instead of doing that i would add technique to all five case anyway so I don't know where I'm blocking, but I'm blocking on everything as a deliberate disfluency. 
Deliberate disfluency is a using techniques in real life. This is what it is. So I, I would go deliberate disfluency on K and on A, like my first and last name. Rewriting subconscious uh, tape player. It is incredibly difficult to change the habituated way of speaking. For me, I've been on a program uh, since 2001. My last course was uh, no advertising, please, Alexandra. Maguire rocks, <sighs> yo, love it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'd like to see numbers as to how many uh, Maguires have left the program and actually free. That that brings another point. I think Maguires should more often. I think we should have more of these. Um, I'm doing it. I'm a Maguire person. I Who else? Who else? Who else? Well, the good um, videos I like, it's... Um, St Stammering Hacks, Ruben Pillay? Well, Ruben, of course. Uh, He's... Ramesh. Yes, but out of um, Maguire Shining Stars, I like... Um, not ex Maguires, not uh, people who, who have been kicked out. Brian Sellers. Brian is... He's got some good v vlogs. I enjoy them. Brian Sellers does it right. He puts techniques everywhere. He not afraid to show, not afraid to hide. He can go fluent. He can go anything on you. He's always <laughs> in control of his techniques. You know, so, cool. so why is it that now new people who go to Maguire they cannot do videos? They can do videos. They just choosing not. They're holding back. Stop holding back. It takes some effort. <laughs> yeah. So I started making a, a podcast with Alex and Eugene. Without a video, it was in like a podcast recording studio that I'm, I have access to at, at my university. And it takes a lot of effort. It's not like an easy thing where you can just... I mean, you could in theory just record yourself on a phone. But if you want to get to like the Brian Sellers level of editing and polish, you've got to put some effort in, and it's like it's, it's a hobby. In my case, I just do a one-shot record, and that's it, and I upload it. Whether I block, or whether I stumble, or whether I stutter, it doesn't really matter. What was your question again, Alex? About subconscious, why it takes a long time to. Yeah, on a W you do a prolongation, right? Is it c consciously like I do it on K sounds? You you go uh, hit and hold on W. I do prolongation, but pullouts or block releases or whatever the name you want to call it, cancellations. cancellations. I do that now subconsciously. When I have a block, I just block release i just do it automatically it's an automatic process i don't have to really think about it i just know i'm not i'm not drunk or nor am i an idiot i can hear myself speak as a stutterer when i was out of control i didn't hear myself speak i was just not there i just stuttered out of control and i was there for a very long time and that was also while on this um, non-advertised program That's genius. Uh, that's uh, that's actually how I see therapy at work. So you have a um, block, but you don't push through the block. You pass that. You do right away what's what, what goes after, like prolongation or bouncing, right? So and that uh, click like. I don't have to to do that. You know, I can do it right away. Yeah. So this uh, moment of um, making uh, time of pushing through the block to a minimum, uh, that probably would be a case 
well only if you do block release of course i mean i know that R rama stops and uh, exhale and, and then going again you know instead of um, doing it after Tom. so my m mother has never been on a speech therapy program and she um, she uses technique subconsciously in that she'll speak and if she gets stuck on a g sound she'll be like good good morning and she won't Equally, I know a speech therapist, and he stutters, and he does a very sort of thing. And even though he's been to speech therapy, he doesn't say it's using a technique because for for him, he's always done that. So some so some techniques are just our automatic way of doing it. But some people, maybe you, Emma, maybe myself, maybe Alex, we need to. Work at making it work at making it automatic, but for others it can be like an instantaneous thing, or maybe they have worked at it, but they have worked at it without knowing what it was they were working on. So it is possible to make it an automatic thing. Okay, I have a question about about the book. Um, after after the first book with the esoteric numbers and names on it, uh, you wrote the second book. What made you do that? Um, so basically, after my first book, Rich Thinking, um, Escape the 95 and Live Your Dream Life, I did a second edition called Rich Thinking, 66 Days to Freedom. Because I realized that after I did the first book, I didn't stutter. Meaning, I didn't care if I started, after but after I wrote my first book, oh. I looked at the videos and realized that I stumbled, but in fact, a lot of people stumble. Yeah. When I was working at the Prime Minister's office, at the Prime Minister's office, Tony Blair, he stumbled. I know that for a fact. And if he can stumble, so give myself a break, let me stumble. So what? Yeah. No one sent him to speech therapy at the age of 50, but he for me, it was interesting that Ed, Bo Ed Balls, at the age of 40, when he was a cabinet, cabinet minister, he recognized he started, or maybe he felt so much pressure that he, s that he started, because for me, it's bizarre. At the age of 42, or 40, I'm free. But at the age of 40, Ed Balls, the former chancellor in the UK, the former, former finance minister, he started in a pressurized pressure pressurized situation i don't know i don't know if you blocked or repeated but they labeled him a stutter and they he put stalled. him on tv yeah he stalled he stalled the thing is with red balls is he is perhaps the worst example that a charity like the british stumbling association or anyone could use as a stutterer and they keep on rolling out year after year on the TV news channels. Hey, ITV, BBC One, Sky News, Channel 5, call me. I'm a stutterer from the age of four. Fox, CNN, yeah. ABC. Because Ed Balls didn't realize he stuttered, like he said, until the age of 40. Most stutterers know from the word go. Well, not in <laughs> every case, but they do know. So let me continue my happy story. So, sixty-six days and six hours. Yeah. So um, I read the I read the book into six six chapters, five to ten minutes long, so people can read it every day, and build a habit of reading. We as human humans are very lazy. Our brains are wired to do the least amount of work and to preserve our existence. That's the way it is. It's a scientific fact. I'm not making it up like I've made uh, most of the things up already. Anyway, so after doing that book, I did the second book mainly because I wanted to share what I learned specifically with other stutterers. It doesn't really matter if you stutter. So, I mean, Tom, Tom is making great, great eye contact even though he's stuttering like a beast, like my friend Eugene would say. 
He's making great eye contact. He's not a typical out of control stutterer. An out of control stutterer does this. <laughs> they don't even look. But Tom, he looks directly at the person's eyes. So that means he's comfortable stuttering out of control. He's comfortable. He's at a different level. So all, mm, all the power to him, man. It's, re it's really great that he's at that stage that he doesn't care at all. But the difference is he's making good eye contact with the listener. So in my second book, I interviewed four people. One was a brain surgeon from Harvard. Another one was a hypnotherapist. Another one is a... Simon? Nope. Uh, the, another one was a meditation expert. And the last one was a uh, brain surgeon or a neuroscientist from Germany. And, and one was what? Magician, uh, sorry, meditation expert. Meditation expert. Oh. So this magician, meditation expert, shared some insights with me that, which I've already learned and talked about, saying that we all connected to the universe. And by meditating, you actually experience. We were talking off camera about LSD, and uh, that's something that Alex is going to try very soon, and I might join him. Well, yeah. Um Hold on. No, 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 no. Um, I w <laughs> you put me <laughs> off track with this LSD stuff. <laughs> yeah. L cool, LSD is good. Go try it for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. But um, in terms of um, relationship between you and your book, uh, so you said that eye contact, right? Eye contact is a um, show of confidence, this and that. But eye contact is a technique. So you use most eye humans. Con no, make no, eye no, 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 no. Most humans talking make eye contact. Mm, well, we can't really say that. We can. Uh, we should define it s scientifically. Like uh, the part of a good communication is a strong eye contact, right? Is it safe to say that? Yes. But if you want to learn. A communication you learn eye contact as a part of a complex system of techniques so eye contact is a technique for communication so natural perfect well well absolutely yes I mean if I'm uh, paranoid it, it doesn't mean that no one is watching me, right? <laughs> the same thing. You can do this uh, technique automatically and it won't be a technique, it's your nature. But for other people, they have to learn specifically that exercise and they would use it as a technique, as a thing we use to separate one one action from another my point is eye contact is a technique what you using on um, times you your words you use a uh, prolongation as we discussed and you do cancellation you do pull out and then you and you breathe in a controllable way so you use uh, already counted like at, at least three techniques do you mention those techniques in your book in this book I don't talk about techniques in terms of physical techniques you need to write another one. I'm going to write uh, book two which is coming out in the spring uh, book three will come out in the autumn and book four will come out in the spring of 2020 so I have my uh, plan but um, in this book I specifically talk about dreaming so if you don't have a dream that you will be an effective communicator then you never will become an effective communicator. First, you need to write a plan or think of a plan as how become aware of how you stutter. For me, it's very interesting seeing Tom stuttering out of control and being very comfortable with it. Like I said, he's at a different level. But most people who stutter out of control aren't making eye contact. And maybe, maybe that's one thing that they could actually do. 
make eye contact and start to out of control and see how that empowers you. Maybe that might be one way for one way for someone who is struggling right now. Just force yourself to make eye contact. Look yourself in the mirror and speak. And if you find that you can speak in the mirror without stuttering, hey, that's amazing, isn't it? That you can speak without stuttering in one situation. Anyway, so um, back to my book. So the brain surgeon I interviewed, he was in a coma for seven days and he described his magical journey. Um, he had meningitis, so which meant that his, neuro his neocortex was destroyed, so everything that he experienced was real for him. And uh, in his book, he shared it with me and in my book, uh, he shared it again. Um, the other one uh, I interviewed was the neuroscientist from Germany, Dr. Christian Nell Kell. He told me about how the brain repairs stuttering. We have a superpower and that's called neuroplasticity. With that, you're able to rewire your brain to... For example, if you stutter, you're speaking out of control, you're letting the subconscious speak. But if you start to become conscious about the speaking process, make it conscious, breathe and then speak then you are retraining your brain you're rewiring your brain with new neural pathways so he did a he did an exercise uh, a study and I share that in my book as well um, the last one was the hypnotherapist um, from US and that guy he blew my mind away because I had a victim mentality for many years. I thought, why me, why me, why do I stutter? And he shared his experiences of doing hypnotic, hypnotic, hypnotic life regressions with patients. And he showed that those experiences in their lives. So I moved from a victim mentality to someone who has a power of knowing that I chose to have these experiences in my life to develop self-love, to develop worthiness, compassion and all those virtues. So I shared that in my book and writing this book has freed me even more because it made me realize, Tom and Alex, that I'm part of the universe just like you and I. The trees actually serve a very important purpose for us because if there were no trees in the universe, we wouldn't have any, ox any oxygen. We breathe out CO2, carbon dioxide. The, the trees take in the CO2 and they give out the oxygen which we breathe in. That's a fact. Without the trees, we wouldn't exist. They are part of our living, part of our breathing mechanism. So, in my book series, I want to empower people to believe in themselves that they can overcome stuttering forever. It doesn't have to be like um, you go on a course for, for three days, you come off a course, you're flying high for like three months like I did, and then you crash and burn, and then you go back onto a course for another fix of fluency. You go, you go back again and again and again for the rest of your life. It's time to take responsibility for your speech and for your life. That's a hard part, but if you really want to do anything in your life, that's what you need to do. Yeah, I actually thought about... Uh, Trees conspiracy that uh, the whole like um, the way of us, of us living it's actually t trees are controlling us and uh, so we can do this more is uh, CO2 so they can take more and they love it yeah so it's uh, it's real it's real well and the uh, trees made us as a walking mushroom you know they just did mushrooms and I mean if you read about it you will know it but <laughs> stuttering about rewriting those neurological patterns and those neurological patterns they they go straight to subconscious and it's um, repetition neurological pattern is your um, map to where information is recorded so information information is already there and your neurological pattern is access to it and the more time you 
access this file as a stronger neurological pattern is and you tend to go to the file you access the most right and in our case we access uh, the file where we start a lot this is our file we go the most and as I said it's just a tape recording of uh, subconscious so all you have to do to rewrite uh, new pathways to uh, new files and go there more often yeah I agree I wanted to ask Rama about um, you were saying about just then about how you became more virtuous more um, yeah more spiritual yeah more virtuous when did you start becoming more virtuous more spiritual um, I guess after writing my first book, Rich Thinking, I just listened to the insights, the things which they all shared, that we're all part of the universe. And for me it's amazing that Albert Einstein wrote that quote I said earlier. And we think we are separate, but we are not. No, sure. We are not separate, Tom, no, sure. Alex, and everyone who's listening. We are not separate. We are all part of the universe. The movie The Matrix, for me, is, is a documentary. <laughs> it's, it's really amazing how, how the movie came out in 1999. And that really shaped my life now. I thought the film was amazing, but in the last couple of years, it really made me more aware of how we are connected and how how our brain is just an organ we think the brain's creating things but i believe it's an organ just like the heart and the lungs and the liver it's just taking in the taking in all the data from the environment and processing it and then we experience our life on this planet right so you mentioned two things F first of all how we process the information this uh, membrane um, I agree yeah but those p perceptions c can be changed right I into yes. the ones that more more suitable and the other thing yeah the other thing you mentioned was that that uh, we are a part of a uh, universe and you sound like you're a pantheist like Alan Watts was a pantheist so you're a part of the whole universe and uh, uh, apple t uh, tree gives apples and a universe makes people so universe peoples with people so you are exp expression of the universe what it wants to be and uh, maybe universe made us as a part of itself so it can it can take a look at itself yes. with our eyes and your eyes is a different angle of on things and your eyes might be more sensitive than other eyes so you might be benefiting there but in terms of social appliances your your eyes might work against you because uh, uni universe made you uh, socially awkward for a reason so do you accept it or do you fight it i agree completely that as part of the universal life i'm just this is a, just a body. We all know that everything's energy. It's a scientific fact. Everything's yeah. energy. Okay. Yeah. So I believe that this aspect of me, Rama, Siva, I chose to experience stuttering. I chose to experience all the suffering for me to realize that I'm part of the universe. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if I didn't have a stutter. If I didn't have a stutter, I would have wanted to go into banking, into finance, um, just make a lot of money and doing all those things. But because I had a stutter, 
I had a different path. I had different experiences, which meant that I became more introverted. I looked within myself to find out what the truth is. But Alex, you're quite right. Each person has their own view of the world, their own version of the truth. Whatever you believe in is whatever you will manifest in your life. 100%. I'm of a very different uh, persuasion, but I won't let that deny me the <laughs> conversation. I'm very much of the opinion that the universe is random and that there is little evidence at anywhere to suggest that uh, anything has a purpose or has a plan. So you came from monkey? Charles Darwin said so. I came from a monkey and the monkey came from a fish and the fish came from a, yeah. a cell and the cell c came from a random, a, a random event and the random event had like another random event. And who is behind the random event? No one's behind anything. There is nothing to be behind, I don't think. I believe everything. I believe everything is around. Everything is just now. We're just living in 2018, 27th of October, on this freezing London weather, 7 degrees, I think. We're just here doing a podcast. Why? I've got no idea why. To explain to other structures in the universe that we can overcome stuttering. If we, if we really want to, if we want to start out of control, then carry on. Just as long as you make eye contact, then you will realize and for yourself. Cancellation and prolongation, you'll be okay, right? <laughs> you, you will be okay, but you'll realize that, like Tom, that it doesn't really matter if you stutter. Stuttering isn't really a big problem. It's more of about how you feel. Well, that's how it was for me. Stuttering is why I'm doing this podcast. I mean, it's a problem with me, and I don't like it. I think I would be a better person without st stuttering easy. Tom, do you like stuttering? I do now, yeah. You love it? I wouldn't say love it. I like it. You like it. I do. I think uh, stuttering is, an, is, endless, is endlessly fascinating. It's, uh, it's, it's a real mystery. And it's a fun jigsaw puzzle to solve. You can solve it. Wow. Tom, you're definitely at a different level. I bow to you. You're 22, man. I was fucked. At 22, I was <laughs> fucked. I couldn't, I couldn't find a decent paying job at the age of 22. At the age of 25, I joined the Prime Minister's office, Prime Minister's office, 10 Downing Street, and I started. I started like you, in front of my boss. Yeah. I had no eye contact. I had no, I had no technique. I just started in front of my boss, and on the phone, picking on the phone, saying, g -g 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 g <sighs> "Good afternoon." It was a fucking nightmare. Stuttering is no fun. Can be fun. No. It can be. No. For some it is. For some it isn't. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah. There's a guy called Grant Meredith from the U from the from Australia. He's an amazing guy. He's been on this non-advertised course called Maguire, <laughs> yes. and yes, he has. And uh, he's got no no uh, no technique. But does he does it let him hold him back? No, he doesn't. So. If you ask Simon Bailey, he'll tell you he has. I've met him. He's been on. He maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't uh, disclose the fact, but. Has Simon met this man? No. Did he? Did you actually ask him if he has been on Maguire? I said, "Have you been on any sp sp speech therapy?" He said, "No." <laughs> Bullshit. Well, it is, it is. <laughs> now he comes. Let's look. Let's let's look at the bank records at Maguire Australia. So, if if you are, um, who are you? Scott McIntosh? No. Maybe he has a bit. Of course, I believe he went to have a look at the techniques to see if it suited him or not, and obviously he didn't. I think, I think, I think, I think you're right, actually. Yeah, I think he did, but I think he got p 
pissed off with the Maguire program. It's like, I don't like you. Oh, I got from the day I realized that it doesn't work because it gave me the first step, but I, got, but I got stuck on it for the last 15 years. So fuck that. <laughs> I think Maguire is an awesome program. I think it worked. I think that I am one of the best Maguire st students. <laughs> Me, Ramesh, uh, I don't know, like a few people don't want names to be dropped, so I won't, but like Maguire is awesome and it it mentioned all the three reasons why we start uh, and it works with all three, with all three, with a special emphasis of coming out of a closet and out of hiding. Maguire might not even know that they are doing it, but they are doing a good job with the uh, unhiding person who started? I'm not um, saying that Maguire isn't doing a good job. They could do a better job. For a program that's, that has been running for 20 years, they could step up to a different level. And so that, uh, that reminds me. Well, you left. Yeah, I left, yeah, because uh, it was pony. Yep. So, in fact, in, f in fact, I am. I will be starting my own program in the coming year. Um, it will be called the Stuttering Freedom Program and I will be doing a video course, workshops in the coming year and I hope to be going to India in 2020 because a lot of Indians stutter. I'm not too sure why. Maybe it's because we speak very quickly in our native language so speaking in English my results in the same stuttering behavior. It also might be because you've got an, 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 an enormous population of, was it 1.4? 1, 1, 1 billion. 1 billion or is it 1.3 billion? 1.3 billion. 1.3 And growing. Yeah. Uh, that might be why you got so many people who stutter. 100 million or something. Then wha what happened to the Chinese stutterers? So this is a, a, this a, this a, this a, this a, a very interesting debate in stuttering. So there appears to be variations in stuttering pre pre prevalence in different parts of the world. However, there are some problems with the data, one being that in China, speech language th therapy has never existed until the 1980s and 1990s, which means that there, there aren't many records, and equally there aren't uh, many speech th th therapists there at all, which means that there is no way of measuring how many people stutter in the population. However, w what we can say is that so far there are people in China who stutter, but there aren't that many who we know of. That there might be millions of people who stutter in China, but they haven't let it out, or they haven't told anyone. But right now, if we take the current estimates, and this is pres presuming that there aren't many people who stutter in ch China, the region of the, the, uh, of the world that has the, the highest incidence of people who stutter is all West Africa, with, with, with estimates as high as one in ten people stutter, wow. which is enormous. One in ten. West Africa. West Africa. Um, second on the list, you have uh, African Americans. Then I think it goes. Um, then it goes to Northern Europeans. Um, then the people with the lowest uh, pre pre prevalence of stuttering are Native Americans, the Chinese, and East Asians. Why do Native Americans have no difficulty speaking? Well, there are Native Americans who stutter. Mm -hmm. There aren't as many. The reason why is unknown. That that goes back to a question that we were discussing previously. Um, is it in the labeling of someone that you are stuttering, you're stumbling, that you're blocking, and that you're sent to speech therapy? Does that cause people to hold on to that fear, that behavior, that pattern of speaking? Because obviously, if countries like China, Native Americans don't have speech therapists, there's no label, and people don't label mm. uh, the children. They just get on and they just speak and they just grow out of it. And yet, people in uh, the Native Americans do still stutter. 
the 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 there is no word for stuttering in a lot of the Native American languages, and yet people still stutter, just because the there are no therapies out there for it, just because the there there are no labels, doesn't mean that people won't stutter. It's just that it's treated as an unknown, and they aren't, you know, um, shown in society. The, they've also found that there are v- 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 variations in the Native American population as to who stutters. So certain tri- uh, tribes have a higher higher pr- pr- prevalence of stutterers than other tribes. Again, reasons unknown. There's a v- very good theory about this, which states that um, certain parts of the, 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 the world have acquired language at different points. East Asia was one of the, the first places to uh, our language um, West Africa was one of the most recent places to acquire language and the, the theory runs that you know there is this there is a clear correlation with language development and with the rates of stuttering might that be why um, it's unproven partly because we still don't know much about how many people in China stutter if it is found from subsequent r- from more research that people in China do have a lower prevalence of stuttering than other c- c- countries, then that would mean that that theory is in part correct. What do you call stuttering? Can you define stuttering? Um, that's a very good d- 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 definition somewhere, but off the top of my head I would say it is uh, the involuntary repetition of sounds or it could be in blocks and so on um which affect uh which um which are audible or inaudible you know what i don't really have a v- v- very good succinct definition off off to off the top of my head but i'm sure if you looked in one of the textbooks that i've been reading they would give you a very good conclusive definition. Yes, the reason why I asked was uh, John Harrison, um, he doesn't use the term stuttering in the normal context. He is yeah. uh, j- he, he just... He redefines it. He, re- re- he yeah. redefines it, indeed. And that is the way that I would go ahead because uh, stuttering is a loaded word and, uh, and people who stutter can't even say stuttering. Yeah. They find it difficult to say that word. So... Um, and also, bearing in mind that stuttering doesn't just apply to de- 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 developmental stuttering, it also applies to de- 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 different types of stuttering. Can you catch sa- stuttering? Because I just noticed my speech a minute ago, where if you play it back, you will have a listen that I was, I don't know if I was sympathetically imitating or copying, but I did have a stumbling more stumbling scenario check it out it's um m- one hour and three minutes so check it out so uh, can you catch stuttering i mean you have a son i have a son as well so i'm definitely conscious about my speech around him yeah. i mean i can oh in terms of catch as a disease habit well, uh, you can have uh, certain psychological uh, traits. Th- they might be given, might be developed. But my stuttering gene is uh, strong. Yes, so I expect to have problems. Yeah, and I have no illusions about it. Do you have any s- any siblings? I do have siblings. And do they stutter? None of them stutter. Why not? Why not? How many do you have? It's the mystery of stuttering. How many do you have? I've got a brother and a sister, both of them are younger than me. Younger than you? And one of him is a lot more introverted and shy than I am. Is he covert? No. Not at all. He's got no stuttering problem. My mother stutters, but she's a very extroverted, confident person. My uncle stuttered, and he lost his stutter in a week, aged 20. Well done. But he, he is also very in- introverted okay. as a person, 
and yet he lost it in a week which just goes to show that stuttering is so mysterious so mysterious I'm always reluctant to draw any conclusions about stuttering because frankly there is no answer just yet in my opinion I have a I have a definition of uh, stuttering, but we asked you, Ram, at the very beginning, the same question you asked Tom. What is stuttering? Give me one second, I'll look for the definition. Meanwhile, please talk. Where, where did you took this uh, definition originally from? Oh, and about Harrison. Harrison says that... Um, uh, change stuttering for holding back but he doesn't use it as a word substitution because we can't say s sound stuttering he means it in a psychological meaning like you don't have to use word stuttering if you use holding back in your head that would give you a good definition as well so stuttering definition by John Harrison is a holding back. Yes, I agree. Um, mm. When you change the words for holding back instead of stuttering. All right. So basically, you can agree then. Then once you start holding back from that moment, you can call uh, that experience stuttering, because you might be stumbling but not holding back, so it's not stuttering. I like to read out what Ram has written for his definition of stuttering. Stuttering for me is the unconscious pattern of hesitation and holding back when speaking. It's the repetition of sounds, words or blocking, coupled with facial distortions in the attempt to get a word out when speaking, which developed into a lifetime fear of speaking, and I didn't want to stutter and be laughed at. I was terrified in class. I didn't want to stand out, and the stutter made me stand out. It was as if the inner being wanted me to stand out and be counted and not just blend in like I consciously wanted to. The mere repetitions of sounds or words doesn't constitute stuttering. If so, Prime Minister Theresa May is a stutterer, along with Mark Zuckerberg. Under pressure, everyone stumbles or stutters. That doesn't mean he or she is a stutterer. Stuttering is a broad term. There are many stutterers who live their lives in bliss, irrespective of the stutter. It hasn't caused them to become a shrinking violet. However, there are many more stutterers who are greatly affected by the effects of stuttering. This may affect their choice of job, partner, and even their mental health. Confidence, low self-esteem, and social anxiety are effects of stuttering, or is it the other way around? That's the definition offered on page 25. And thank you so much, uh, Tom, for reading it so eloquently. Well, yeah, so uh, you describe only psychological parts of it, stuttering as a cause of it, and then as a symptom I itself is a silent block. So my definition of a stuttering is it's just blocking. Repeating sounds, that's not stuttering. What's, 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 what's blocking? Silent block. block. Mental block. Yeah. If you did it on uh, purpose, so if it was a um, natural behavior, yes, it's stuttering. So that's me repeating sounds. That isn't me blocking. There was nothing like a facial distortion. Right. That, that was me re 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 repeating what five times. Okay. Okay, so that wasn't uh, stuttering. You're right. That was wasn't. Was, was not. So what is? So what? What, what, what was that? Uh, Repeating words. Silent block. How is it silent? I was making five sounds. All right. No, some people. All right. So uh, if we can't, um, I mean, the expression of a block uh, can be different for. Uh, many people and uh, just a few variations just as you read in Rama's book but to define it more precise it's a mental block which uh, which gives distortion on the speech 
one way or another but stuttering block like stuttering per se it's uh, it's um, yeah it's a mental block which is hard to pass and you have to, to do something about it like it doesn't go naturally okay lads I'm very tired and quite cold so I'm g going to step out are we all going to step out? Yeah. I think so. In which case... I just wanted to add something. Of course. Tom, uh, while you were reading page 25, yeah. you spoke with such eloquence. Yeah. Do you realize that? Yes. And what's the difference between sp reading out like that and speaking like that all the time? Is it just too much hard work? Um, so the reason why I was speaking eloquently or, or fluently without blocks is because there's a, there's a rhythm and a meter to the words and I've never ever struggled with speaking from a page equally I don't struggle with p p public speaking stuttering is a mystery my friends if you can read in theory yeah if you can speak in one situation without stuttering you can speak in any situation Tom you're already on the way you can speak in any situation yes. Whether or not you speak fluently is a different matter. I could, in any situation, in theory, as a possibility, speak fluently. Of course I could. Equally, I could do lots of things. The possibilities are endless in life. The realities are different. And that is random Likelihoods. That that could be totally random chance. So, for instance... I met the 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 queen as a young kid. Oh, did you? I did. What did you What did you say? Um. So she asked me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mum. No. I, so, so she asked me, where is which school do you come from? Because we were all um, school children from a local school, not too far from Westminster Abbey. Mm -hmm. Down, kind of southwest Westminster area. Did you go to a posh school? It was a primary school, it was state. It was a state school. It just happened to be in a relatively for sure. Um I blocked only after she walked away. So what happened was she asked, Which school do you go to? And I said, Oh, we go to that school just round the <laughs> corner. Not blocking mind. And then um I think she started walking on because she got lots of people to, to, to talk to and I'm only a eight year old kid. And then um, I said something about like, oh, it's like that street, but but uh, but she'd already started walking, and this was in theory a very high pressure situation, and yet I didn't stutter. So again, there's an element of random chance. But you said that you can read from a page without stuttering. Yeah, because that's. And how many times out of hundred can you do that without stuttering? Thousands of times because. Thousands of times because you have a belief that you can read. No, no. Or you just know it as a fact. No. It's because there's no, 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 no. Because there is a rhythm, there's a m there is a meter to speaking. M there is no speech planning that I have to do in my head because the, the speech planning is happening on the page. My speech planning mechanism is doing it for me. Formulation. It could be formulation, whatever. The point is, is that I won't do it because there is timing, planning, and a meter, all written down for me. So I don't have to do that, because I struggle with that. Because okay. I've got some kind of deficiency up there, which I can't d do that as easily as other people. That's why I, that's why I don't speak with a stutter when I'm reading, okay. personally. They labelled me a stutterer when I was reading in class out at school. In effect. So in your case. Stuttering is a very individualized thing. Um and no two stutters are alike. Therefore I'm very hesitant about making any kind of generalizations about how people stutter because people stutter in all kinds of different shapes and sizes and forms and mannerisms. Anyway. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Finding Voices Podcast. Which episode was this? Fifteen. Fifteen! Can you believe it? I can't. Um, it's been a pleasure having Rama. Thank you, Tom. Any, any closing words, Rama, to say like 
what you want people to know about the, the book, just like a short few sentences. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we miss Eugene. Hopefully, he'll be back very soon. Um, just want to say, guys, uh, for those who want to really work on their speech, it's a mentality of working on your speech throughout the life. It may take you six months, one year, two years, ten years, but always have the belief and the dream that you can overcome this stuttering. Joe Biden, the former Vice President of the USA, he started into his 30s and he recovered. So there's no reason if you are an adult that you too can overcome stuttering. It takes hard work, discipline, determination, and most of all, desire. If you really want it to happen, you can do it. I wouldn't have thought that I would be coming and doing YouTube videos, going on TV, the BBC. Ever on YouTube. It's the best show ever, Finding Voices 99. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's uh, got to mention in, in my book, along with Alex uh, and Eugene and Tom. Is there? Um, so, guys, have a great one. I'll see you at a, on another podcast. I'm very certain of that. Yeah, well, uh, one book, one podcast. You read another book, <laughs> you'll be invited again. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's always nice to have you, and I think you have things to write about. And uh, you're always welcome here. The best show on uh, YouTube about stuttering. Um, who we want to p p plug in? Let's uh, plug in our friends. First of all, stutteringmind.com is a good place where Rama does his blogging. And uh, Tom Wheeler on YouTube. And then uh, Ruben Pillai, Stuttering Hacks amazing and yeah hashtag io i design you stop holding back and uh mr ramesh who else uh, simon bailey from mr. simon Martin bailey is our friend yes uh thank you very much uh finding voices podcast yeah bye for now, bye for now. maguire rocks <laughs>